Okay, well welcome to the old classic car channel and today's classic brochure review is for the Ford Pop 103E. Um, in this video I'll be looking at an original sales brochure and also some leaflets which I've never seen before or since that all relate to the side valve Fords. So, to begin with, the Ford Pop 103E. This was produced from 53 to 1959. Uh, it's powered by Ford's famous 1172cc side valve four cylinder engine, and it was their most basic car in their range at the time. Um, no heater, single windscreen wiper, virtually no bright work on the car at all. It really was a back to back to basics, no frills motoring uh, for the masses. Uh, it can trace its lineage all the way back to the 1930s with the Model Y and then you had the Anglia E04A and in 1949 there was the Anglia E494A which had the 8 horse engine but it looked very similar, the shape was almost identical if not identical to what became the Pop 103E in 1953 um, like I say it was based largely on the E494A but it had the 10 horse 1172 engine and whereas the Anglia had the nice Bakelite dashboard, this had a pressed metal affair, uh, less bright work on the bonnet, on the hubcaps, painted bumpers instead of chrome bumpers. It really was a very simple, dependable, steady, easy-going little car. And this brochure dates to some point in the mid-1950s. So, it, as it says here, the lowest-priced car in the world, the Ford Popular. Uh, this sold alongside the 100E, which was introduced in 1953 also, uh, whereas the 100E was a three-box saloon and sort of fairly modern for its time, at least stylistically. The pop very much still dated back to the pre-war days of styling. So let's have a quick look inside E. And here we have a very nice illustration of a 103E pop, low-cost motoring, with high quality performance. The Ford Popular offers many more thousands of road users and would-be motorists the essentials of modern motoring, comfort, performance, reliability, safety at a price made possible only by Ford quantity production. Uh, because of course in the 1950s uh, new cars, if you could get a hold of one, were a lot more expensive than these so a lot of people were faced with having to run a pre-war car, possibly some old banger that had been taken back off blocks after the war and uh, sort of coaxed back into life but if you wanted a new car you either had to pay a lot more money or you'd pop down to your Ford garage and buy one of these at this amazingly low price for a saloon car the Ford Popular loses none of the quality of four-wheeled four-cylinder performance or running economy for which Ford cars are renowned if you are a family motorist you'll be delighted with the comfort the Popular provides there is ample room for four people and a large luggage compartment accessible from outside. Of course, the cars like the standard eight, you have to go in through the back seat. Uh, if you use a car as a business aid, the low price, low running costs, easy service and reliability of the Ford Popular are all profit points. Ford Popular, the lowest priced car in the world. On the reverse side, we have the specifications. Uh, like I say, four cylinder, uh, 1172cc, 30.1 brake horsepower at 4000 rpm and a three bearing balanced crankshaft. Pressure fed lubrication, ignition, 6 volts of course back in the day. Uh, at least it had a petrol pump, a mechanical pump. Uh, transmission was a three forward speeds. Suspension was a transverse leaf springs. I mean that dates back to the Model T with the, the transverse springing. Uh, overall length 12 foot 8 and a quarter 3 quarter inches and let's have a look body welded steel safety glass windscreen leather cloth upholstery cloth lined roof safety door handles and both doors can be locked even had a rear view mirror and adjustable driving seat so all the all the mod cons general equipment single windscreen wiper moisture proof headlamps front and rear bumpers tail and stop lights combined an interior jack. I believe the first or the earlier pops like this one have they have the opening vents on the scuttle whereas the later ones they just have like a clamshell opening. The early ones also had a single I believe stop tail lamp in the middle of the boot 
and later cars they had stop tail lamps one on either back wing so that's one way of uh, identifying the differences between the 103 epops uh, internally very little changed at all but the first cars had the three spoke banjo steering wheels from the sit up and beg prefects and then once the stocks of those were used up they went to like a two bar fairly plain looking affair but the great thing about this brochure is not only does it have this lovely illustration you can fold it open he says and we have a large fold out poster all about the Ford Popular a car with a universal appeal and we've got uh, a nice blue example with the boot lid down and uh, a man loading his luggage of course it was as the boot space itself was fairly small a lot of cars of this era and before the war the, the uh, boot lid would drop down he'd have straps to hold it and then you'd pile up your luggage on the back uh, and he's saying oh there's ample room ample luggage room the other gent is saying it's so economical to run and the lady is saying such smart upholstery so you can see where people's priorities were or it was believed to be and the other lady here is saying plenty of head and leg room too and a further list of benefits for buying a 103e a low initial cost the remarkable running economy reliability comfortable interior with smart upholstery and generous leg and headroom of course it dates back to the days when people wore hats so yes the headroom was pretty good in in the 103e easy but sure handling and maneuverability in traffic and confined spaces its other important safety features the strong welded steel body construction and two doors wide enough to permit easy access to the front and rear seats with handles out of the reach of lively children riding in the back capacious and weatherproof luggage compartment accessible from the outside with a lid hinged to serve as a platform for extra luggage its wide one-piece windscreen and wide sweeping wiper singular giving unobstructed curb to curb visibility in any weather and a unique Ford dealer service. There's a Ford dealer at your service in your town. You can maintain your popular in perfect condition at the least possible cost and always carries a full range of parts. For the reasons given above, when the time comes to part with it, your popular, like all Ford products, should be a best seller. It's also interesting to note that in this particular illustration, it there's a little bit of poetic license as usual um, the roof is shown body color blue but actually this was a, like a rexine type panel set into the center of the roof um, and that dates back to the pre-war years and they just continue to run with it uh, just looking at this illustration here i'm just thinking where if you were going to buy a pop today where would you look for the rust the gutters they often go at the back where the wings bolt on uh, the chassis the separate chassis underneath is usually pretty good but the sills themselves can go and the door pillars they always seem to rust where the hinges bolt on here and here the wings aren't usually too bad um, but there there the sills where the back wings bolt on and usually the back edge of the boot floor as well that's somewhere else to have a look if you're thinking about buying a, a pop today so let's just close that up and we can put that to one side because also I've got these little leaflets now I believe these were issued by a garage in Ireland I bought these years ago and I've never seen them before or since and these were given out by Limerick Motor Works 1950 Limited main Ford and Fords and dealers of Upper William Street in Limerick now I'm not sure if every Ford garage gave these out and they had their own details printed on the back and these were issued by Ford perhaps or was this just something that this particular garage in Limerick did I'm not quite sure uh, I would have thought that if this was a proper Ford publication it would say somewhere on them but it doesn't appear to so if we just have a quick look here we've got this one here highway hints for Ford owners and this isn't just for the, the Ford popular uh, this applies to all the side valve Fords of the 1950s and if anything that looks like an Anglia with the larger headlamps and the bumper overriders but it's 1950s more or less so this one is sparkling performance about your Ford's ignition and lighting circuit by our Ford expert so we open it out winter nights ahead mean a greater strain on your Ford's electrical system 
Is it in tip-top condition to meet the strain? If not, have everything tested now and be on the safe side. And you opened it up and there are some tips on your electrical system. There's a gentleman there working on the well, Mark 1 console. There are many, many things you can do yourself to ease the strain of winter driving. And there are other things that are best left, to, they're best done by a skilled mechanic. This little folder will help you to decide. It is sent to you in the hope that the information it contains will make your winter motoring easier and pleasanter. So there's lots of tips in there, some top tips for motoring. Just have a quick flick through. We've got more highway hints for Ford owners. Stopping power, mainly about brakes. And again, it folds out. You've got some tips on braking. Good brakes are good friends, but they need looking after. And we've got a, what looks like a, sort of, not quite sure, similar to 100E, but not quite. And we've got a prefect here. And the badly adjusted brakes can cause a bad skid. And worn brakes lengthen your stopping distance. Another fault of worn or badly adjusted brakes is that you tend to pull over to one side when stopping. So again, this is promoting the... Uh, sound maintenance of your little Ford back in the 1950s and also encouraging you to go to Limerick Motor Works Limited. So I'll put that one over there. Another one here. Showers, muddy patches and the motorist. Tips on how to get out of awkward places by our Ford expert. Another Anglia. This is the E494A. Like I say this whole group of paperwork relates to the side of our Ford so it seemed appropriate to mention it here. Now is the time to get your Ford tuned up for spring driving. A tune-up now may save a hold-up later. And, as promised, we've got stuck in the mud tips. Try this. If you get bogged down in mud, snow or sand, and what driver doesn't at some point or other, don't give up hope and send for a breakdown van right away. With careful handling, you may succeed in getting your Ford out yourself. Read this folder carefully and make a mental note of the expert advice it gives. It gives you some tips there, which... Uh, I'm sure you can just be able to make out I would have thought. So they really did think of everything with old Limerick Motor Works. But like I say, it would be really interesting to know if other garages issued these as well in their own name, or was this just the one garage coming up with this? Here's another one. Take my tip, fit a replacement and save money. We've got a gentleman here, it's a Ford garage pointing at his E493A prefect. Again, oh, the Merrick Motor Works. The Ford Engine and Parts Exchange Plan means longer service at lower cost from your Ford vehicle. There we go, so there's uh, all sorts of details about reconditioned engines because uh, it wasn't unusual to change an engine every few years, which uh, doesn't seem to happen nowadays. A new heart for your car. And also brake linings, distributors, clutch discs and so on. Only genuine Ford replacements can guarantee satisfaction. There we go. The Ford engine and parts exchange plan means longer service at lower cost. What a great, I love the illustrations on these, that's why I bought them. But we got another one, Touring Without Tears, another prefect on there. Useful tips from our Ford expert. There we go. Here we have carefree holiday motoring is largely a matter of planning. Study maps well in advance when planning a touring holiday or a long journey. Travel midweek if possible, especially if your journey takes you near or into big towns. And of course, don't forget your hat and pipe, because they're, they're essential for any uh, 1950s motor tour. Let's pop that one down there. No pun intended. Talking of squeaks, don't neglect their warning. Nothing is more annoying to the motorist than a persistent squeak. Sometimes squeaks and squeals are easily located, but often they are not. No squeak should be tolerated for long, because it may be a definite warning. And here we go. It's your Ford's way of telling you something is wrong. We appear to have a, another sit-up and beg Ford prefect there in the console, Mark 1. Nine times out of ten it takes a skilled mechanic to get to the real root of the trouble. Mm, I'm sure... And then there's some tips on summer lubrication and generally how to find squeaks in your ancient Ford. Well, not so ancient then. Worn parts are weak links. Don't trust them. There we go. The value of group replacements. This is just tips on spare parts again. Fairly predictable. 
As your local Ford dealers, it's our job to see that your Ford gives you complete satisfaction in every way. There we go. I'm wondering if, I mean, these are from the 1950s. The name of the company is Limerick Motor Works, brackets 1950. So I'm wondering, because they also feature the Anglia E494A, which continued until 53, I'm wondering if when this garage was established on Upper William Street, I wonder if that's when they had these leaflets created to generate interest in their new company. It's possible. And we've got these, uh, check these points regularly. Fan belt, fuses, distributor points and engine supports. Spot trouble before it starts. So is your fan belt worn? Never drive without spare fuses. Distributor points. Engine supports need checking. Uh, yeah, they do indeed. If you get a bad vibration when pulling away, it can be the gearbox mounts, the rubber mountings on the gearbox. I remember doing that on my E83W some years ago. There we go. So there's that one. There's loads of these. Safety first. Begins with know-how, says our Ford expert. Once again, we go in here. We've got a picture of an Anglia again. Driven carefully and looked after by Ford train mechanics, your Ford will outlast many a more expensive car. So really this is all about getting people to be hands-on and appreciate and work on their own car and really keep on top of the maintenance. Uh, know how, how to deal with a skid. If you get into a skid, turn your front wheels quickly in the direction you are skidding. This will almost always correct the movement. Don't brake or slow down suddenly. And about how to free a jammed starter. It may be a jam starter. Switch off the ignition, put your Ford in top gear and rock it backwards by pushing. This will usually free the starter. And how to stop quickly on a slippery road. Don't jam your brakes on hard or you will skid. Pump the brake pedal sharply. This will reduce your speed and help you to stop safely. Handy tips. I mean, they still apply today, so pop that one there. One faulty cell and bang go start of lights, indicators and horn. Don't risk it. Have your battery checked now. And, as you can imagine, some handy tips on looking after your battery. Uh, advice on ammeters. Uh, bring your battery in for a checkup. Let us check your ignition and lighting circuits. Every wise motorist has his car's electrical circuits checked periodically. It saves that awkward hold-up when you least expect it and it costs so little. Why not let us check your Ford's lighting and ignition circuits to be on the safe side? Limerick Motor Works. Tips about tyres by our Ford expert again. Care of your tyres is more important today than ever before. Tyre saving is money saving. And inside, oh here we go, a few simple precautions that can save you a lot of money. A set of new tyres costs a lot of money these days and wise motorists are doing everything possible to get longer wear from their present tyres. There are quite a number of ways in which you can save tyre wear as you will see from the tips given in this folder. Avoid stopping against the kerbs. This, is, this common habit with motorists is definitely injurious to tyres. And don't corner too fast. Someone driving like a hoodlum in their E494A Anglia. I can't imagine any Anglia drivers drive like that nowadays. I'm sure. Um, don't corner too fast. Every time you drive too fast around the bend, you cause unnecessary tyre wear. And we've got someone in there, Mark 1 console. Don't stop or start too fast. Stopping with locked wheels and revving up too much when starting. Both are bad habits. And both cause excessive wear of tyres. There's just a few tips on wheel alignment and so on. See where you're going and be safe. There we go. And again, we have an E494, E493A, sorry, Ford Prefect, driving along its six volt lamps, dazzling the road ahead. New headlamps make all the difference for brighter driving on dark nights. That looks a bit prefectish as well, doesn't it? Corrosion on reflectors, knocks in traffic, or loose connections caused by bumping over thousands of miles of rough roads. All these things lead to inefficiency in your headlamps. New bulbs as well. Headlamp alignment. When did you have your headlamps aligned? Do they throw their beams correctly on the road ahead? If you have any doubt, we are equipped to check up on your headlamp alignment quickly, efficiently 
and cheaply. A little plug for their business there. And how fast can you stop? Don't hope your brakes are okay, make sure. And a bit of talk here about drum brakes. Lost or loose hubcaps are a source of trouble. Nothing is so annoying as a rattling hubcap, or so ungraceful as one that's missing altogether. Besides, dust and wet get into the wheel and cause the wheel nuts to rust with obvious consequences. It's easily avoided. We have hubcaps for all types of Ford cars, and we can fit one quickly and economically for you. And there's something about Ford con rods as well. And the last of these, you'll be glad to know, don't allow them too much play. We're talking about steering parts here. When parts wear loose, it's best to fit replacements. Spindle connecting rod ends, kingpins, and shock absorber links. A little fault to check now may prevent a major repair. And once again, it's issued from Limerick Motor Works. And that is that collection of old leaflets. And this was a period brochure. I don't think, is there a date? We've got a 1053 on the bottom there, so October 1953. That seems about right, around about the time that the car first came out. Colours for the Ford 103E, you could have a black one with red interior, Bristol Ford with red interior, Winchester Blue with a blue interior, or Dorchester Grey also with a blue interior. So, like I say, this brochure is all about the Ford Pop only, whereas these leaflets here relate to all the 1950s English Fords, so the Pops, the Prefects, and the Anglias, and the occasional Consul, and so on. So I hope they were of interest. Um, like I said, I've never seen these before, and I'd really like to hear from anyone who's seen these issued by other garages, because I'm not sure uh, if it was other garages that did them, or if it was just this one in Limerick. So that'd be interesting. that would be interesting to know, certainly. Uh, that's probably my favourite one. And this, of course, like I say, it's just for the 103 pop, low cost motoring with high quality performance. Uh, but anyway, I hope that was of interest. Uh, this particular video was meant to be all about the Ford 103E pop, but it did drift into other Fords of the 1950s, for which I apologise. But I hope that and these little leaflets were of interest. And uh, if you like this sort of thing, looking at old period brochures and car photographs and so on, please think about liking and subscribing to this channel. And uh, also, if you subscribe, you'll catch future video uploads. So, thanks for watching.